Nowadays, it seems like if you ask someone, what's more impressive, having $1 million or 1 million followers on Instagram? Sadly, a lot of people are gonna say the latter. Now, whether you agree with that or not, that's just the reality we live in. And as the saying goes, if you can't beat them, join them. Or in this case, if you can't beat them, write a program that can beat them. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. After doing some digging, I found a really good GitHub repository that lets you run an Instagram bot. So we're gonna run it and see if I can get Instagram famous. Uh, so either I'm gonna get a lot of followers or I might end up getting banned by Instagram. So really in the spectrum of one of those two things, but only one way to find out. So feel free to follow along. Uh, you guys don't need any prior programming knowledge to run this bot. So with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so this is the GitHub repository of the Instagram bot. It is called Instapy. Now, the one that you want to go to is Instapy Quick Start because what we want to do is we just want to quickly get this started. Now, installing this bot requires installing a lot of programs and dependencies on your system. I personally don't want to get that mixed up with my personal operating system. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually download a virtual machine and run it on that. So the first thing we need to do is actually download a program that can host our virtual machine. Now, if you go ahead and go over to Google and you type in virtual box and click on the first link and then go ahead and download virtual box to your machine and you can either download it for whatever operating system you're using, uh, whether it be Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm gonna assume you guys know how to download and install basic programs, so I'm not gonna walk you guys through that, but that would be the first step that you need. Now, the second thing we're gonna need is an actual operating system. Um, so for me, the easiest thing to use is gonna be Linux. I'm gonna be running Ubuntu specifically. So if you just go to Google and type in Ubuntu download, go to ubuntu.com, and honestly, you could just download the first LTS or long-term support version. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and download that. So then you just basically wait for your download and it should take a so two gigabytes. So I will pause the video and come back when it's done. So over here on our left, we have the Ubuntu operating system ISO downloaded. And on the right here, we have an instance of VirtualBox running. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and click new and give it a name. So I'm just gonna call it Ubuntu, hit continue. Now you need to give it a specified amount of RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and give it four gigs of RAM and then we're gonna go ahead and create a virtual hard disk. Click dynamically allocated. I'm gonna use just whatever the specified thing is, 10 gigabytes. Um, so now we've created like kind of like an empty shell here uh, and we need to go ahead and link the ISO image to that. So if you go to settings, go to storage, and then you go to this plus button here uh, if it's not here already, you're gonna have to go ahead and click add and navigate to your downloads folder here and click that. And then go ahead and select the image, hit choose, hit okay, and then go ahead and start your operating system. All right, so now it's just gonna go ahead and go through the normal installation process. Um, this is kind of a long process and there's a ton of uh, tutorials on YouTube already how to do this. So I'm just gonna pause the video, go through the basic installations and come back when that's done. All right, so at this point, we have a clean installation of Ubuntu. Uh, we wanna go ahead and open up Mozilla, which comes pre-installed on the operating system. We wanna navigate to that same Instapy repository. Now, we can either download this using Git, but the easiest way would be to just go over to the right here and click on clone or download, and then go ahead and download the zip version. And then if you go to save file, you click okay. And if we wanna go ahead, it should be in our downloads folder, which it is here. Now, if you go ahead and double click on that, click on Instapy Quick Start Master and hit extract. Hit extract again and it says extraction completed successfully. So if we go ahead and close that, go ahead and close all these windows out. And if we go over here to our files and we go to downloads, we see that Instapy Quick Start Master is successfully installed, or rather it's downloaded at this point. Now we need to install it. So in order to install this, I'm gonna go ahead and close out these windows and we're gonna go ahead and go over to our terminal. So if we go to show applications and then we go ahead and type terminal, Click on that, 
make this a little bit smaller. Now what we want to do is we want to type CD and when we want to change directory into our downloads folder. So we click LS, we see that we have this Instapy quick start master. We're going to change directories into that. And if we view the contents there, we want to go to this installation folder. So we're going to go CD installation. And then we want to go CD into Linux. And then if we view the contents there, we have this install.sh and update.sh. So we want to go ahead and run install.sh. Go ahead and enter your password. And at this point, it's going to install all the dependencies and all the different programs that it needs in order to run Instapy. So depending on your computer and your internet connection, this can take anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. All right, so at some point, you're going to get to this page right here called Configuring Locales. Just go ahead and press the Enter key. Now you want to go ahead and scroll down. And for me, if I keep scrolling, I want to go to this one, which should already have an asterisk on it, this one right here. Go ahead and click or go ahead and press enter. Go ahead and press enter again. Go ahead and press enter one more time. And right now it's generating the locales. Cool. So I went ahead and paused the video because that was taking a while. It took me about another minute or two to finish installing. And then once you get to this, press any key to continue. Go ahead and press any key. I pushed J and it didn't do anything. So I'm going to push enter. Okay, that worked. Um, so at this point, we have Instapy installed. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to just go over and configure our quickstart.py file and then go ahead and run it. So if we do a change directory and we go back a couple directories. Um, well, actually, at this point, it would probably be better just to go to your files, go to Instapy quickstart master and then go ahead and open up quickstart.py. So at this point, we have a few things here. Uh, we have our username and password that we need to fill in. Here we have a list of potential comments that we can leave. If you go down here, this just creates the session. And now you can set a bunch of optional parameters here. Uh, so you could say uh, set don't include. I believe this says that so this is going to be like an automated thing where it runs through, it likes people's pictures, it comments on them. Um, so you might want to have put some users' names that you don't want that to run against. So you could put that in here, um, right here, session dot like by tags. So what it does is it does a search by hashtag here, and it goes through the it goes through the images that pop up there, and those are what it likes and comments on. So this is where you would actually put in what you'd want. So for me, I'm going to put in uh, programming. And I'm going to put in coding and the amount here is how, how many pictures it's going to like per hashtag that you put in. So we have two at amount 10. So it's going to run against 20 images. And then here we have another few more things here. Uh, we have set do comment, which means that, yeah, I want to comment on 35% of the pictures I see. And then here dot set comments passes in that list of comments that we created up here and then join pods. I'm actually not sure what that does. So I'm just going to leave that alone. So up here, um, I'm going to go ahead and put in my username. So I have my Instagram, Instagram account, keep on coding. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and put in my password and then click save. All right, now that that's saved, we just need to go back to our terminal. Uh, we want to go ahead and clear that out. So we have this quickstart.py. So the next thing we need to do is run Python 3 quickstart.py. Click enter. And at this point, our program should be running. So if we wait a second here, we see that an instance of Firefox opens up. We see that it checks if Instagram is down. It's not. So now it goes to Instagram. And basically, this is all automated. You know, I'm not doing anything here. So it puts in my username, my password. And I think at this point, you do need to manually intervent here and just click not now. <clears throat> cool, so now I'm logged into my account. So at this point, um, I think what it does is it's, 
I think it, it tries to automate what a human would do just so it doesn't seem like it's a bot. So now at this point it goes to hashtag programming as we can see up here. And then a list of pictures come up here. Uh, I believe it just clicks the first one. So yeah, it clicks on one of the ones there. Um, I think at this point it goes to the user's profile and then it goes and clicks one of their images and as you will see it will actually like and possibly comment. So it comments on 35%, remember that's what we put in. Um, so it may or may not comment. Cool, so as, so as you can see it scrolled down and it actually hit the like button here and now it's going to go back and look for more images. So yeah, that's basically the idea of an Instagram bot. You have basically this automated process running. It's going to go ahead and comment on pictures, like pictures. There's also a setting in there that and that where you can follow people. Um, I decided not to do that just because I don't want to follow a bunch of random people. So yeah, that's basically the idea of it is that people see that you liked or comment on their photos. They go to your profile and then hopefully follow you. So yeah, at this point I'm going to stop this process, I'm going to add some more tags as well and run it again for probably like an hour and uh, see if I get any follows. So if we actually go back here um, and we go to my profile, we see that right now I have 2,228 followers. So let's see if I get any followers by the time I come back. All right, and we are back. Let's go ahead and take a look at our results here. When we started, I had four people following and 2,228 followers. So let's go back into Instagram and see what happened. Don't save. All right, we go down here. We have 2,227 followers. I lost a follower? How does that happen? And I somehow ended up following someone, even though I wasn't supposed to. Huh. Well, that was kind of a fail. But um, on the bright side, I didn't get banned. So that's always good. But yeah, obviously it didn't work for me. Uh, I feel like I would have to follow people for them to want to follow me back. I don't feel like liking them or liking their pictures would do much. So yeah, I mean, you guys obviously feel free to try this and see if it works for you. And let me know in the comments if it does. But like I said, it's possible that you could get maybe banned or banned temporarily from Instagram. So use this at your own risk and don't sue me if anything happens, please. But yeah, I'm probably going to wrap the video up there. Um, I did have fun creating this video, so I hope you guys had a good time watching. Um, as always, you know, like and subscribe. You guys know what to do. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.